So there's a question, would your use of the word heart parallel the Christian mystics, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, use of the word soul? Um, that's an interesting question that would require a lot of um, some nuance here. Um, so makes me want to draw on the board here. Mm. In a very brief nutshell, I'll try to say, uh, St. Paul gives us a, a tripartite understanding of the human person. He says that the human person is body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And in, in, um, in, his, in his Greek, that's um, body is soma. Body. Can you see that? Body. Um, soul is, oh, I've got my languages backwards. Soul is psyche. And spirit is pneuma. So, soma, psyche, pneuma are the layers of the human person, according to St. Paul. And um, soma is our, our physical body. Um, it's not when Paul talks about the, the flesh being at war with the spirit, he doesn't use soma. In those cases, he uses the word sarx, which I think we better translate as ego um, rather than flesh. It's really the ego. Um, but soma, the body is good. Soma is the physical embodiment of who we are. Psyche is our unique individuated self, you know, our psyche. And then pneuma is the point of the human person. This is the same word as Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So there's a point in the human person that opens onto and is one with the infinite Spirit of God, the pneuma of God. And um, in Paul's model, you want these three flowing in harmony together. You want them flowing um, one into the other. So pneuma, the infinite, flows into and informs our unique little bundle of divine qualities. That's our unique selfhood. And that flows into and manifests through soma, our body. Um, what tends to happen is, especially in contemporary culture, we've drawn a line here. We've cut ourselves off to the depth dimension of our being. And some of us are obsessed with soma. We're at the gym all the time, working on our bodies, and we're really identified with our physical self, which is not bad, but we can become over-identified with that. Or, hey, we go to therapy once a week, we're doing our psychological work, we're really, and we're really fused with the sense of our psychological self, um, our psyche. But these all move into wholeness when we then open to the depth dimension through contemplative practice, Numa. And so when Numa flows into psyche, flows into soma, we become an integrity. And what the contemplative tradition says is what manifests when these are moving in alignment is cardia. Heart. So then we get cardia, the heart. So the heart is the human person in its fullness. When body, soul, and spirit are an integrity, are a unity, the heart of God manifests through that unity. Um, so, so I would say that's what heart is. Heart is the fullness of the human person fully alive. Um, um, and, and, and soul is what happens when spirit meets body. The body is the finite, spirit is the infinite. When the infinite comes into a finite body, it manifests as a unique soul. So the soul is the, the mediating point, the unique instantiation that each of us are of the meeting of body and, and infinite spirit.